The Seven Wonders of the Ancient World are almost all gone, but there are so many more lost monuments most haven't even heard of. From Solomon's Temple to the Minotaur's Labyrinth, here are the true stories of shocking ancient wonders. Zeus at Olympia the Great Pyramid of Giza is the most famous of the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World, but that's only because it's still standing. The statue of Zeus at Olympia may have been even more impressive than the pyramid. The only reason it's not as popular is that it was shattered into a million pieces. Zeus is the king of the gods, manipulator of thunder and wielder of lightning. It only made sense that around 430 BC, the Greeks decided to build a monumental statue of their favorite deity. The Greeks hired the best sculptor in the land, a man named named Phidias. He was to construct a statue that would be even bigger than the statue of Athena already standing in the Parthenon. Zeus was to be forged of ivory and gold, enough ivory to wipe out half the elephants in the world, and enough gold to make King Midas drool. The statue of Zeus was to be built in Olympia within a new temple. Olympia was the chosen location because every four years the Olympic Games were held. Olympia was under control of the polis city-state, attracting travelers, sports fans, and religious fanatics from across the known world. It would be the perfect place for Zeus to look down upon his subjects. I won't bore you with the complicated details of the construction, from the shaping of bronze and marble to the manipulation of ivory and the smelting of gold. Let's fast forward to the end, when the mighty statue stood an amazing 40 feet high. Zeus was formed into a giant seated on a great throne. He had chrysolophantine skin, meaning a combination of gold and ivory laid over wood. The builders also used silver, glass, copper, paint, and jewels for the finer bits of the statue. So where is it today? The statue of Zeus was such a famous monument that rulers around the world kept trying to steal it. Roman Emperor Caligula tried to remove the statue and bring it to Rome 400 years after it was built. Then pieces of the statue were broken apart and stolen by Emperor Constantine I. The statue was finally removed completely in 395 AD and taken to Constantinople. Then it was destroyed by an earthquake in the 5th century. Not a single piece of it remains. Only some pillars that were once part of its temple are still standing in Greece. And now for number 7. But first, it's shout-out time. I wanted to give a big thank you to Daniel Holland 5808 and Joker Locuson for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these. Nosos Palace in the early 1900s, English archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans excavated the Gnosis Labyrinth. Excavations revealed the ruins of an epic palace, the likes of which had never been seen before. It's believed the palace was the epicenter for life in Manoa on the island of Crete. It was also likely the source for the legend of Theseus and the Minotaur. In Greek mythology, King Minos of Crete asked the god of the sea for a white bull. Minos was supposed to sacrifice the bull in the name of Poseidon, but Minos was greedy and decided to keep the bull. Poseidon was annoyed, so he did something really disgusting. He forced the king's wife to fall in love with the bull. Without getting too nasty, this resulted in the birth of the Minotaur. It was a violent beast, part human and part bull. To contain the wretched creature, Minos enclosed the Minotaur within a great labyrinth. Every year, young men and maidens were forced into the labyrinth and fed to the Minotaur. This continued until the hero Theseus arrived and chopped off the Minotaur's head. Researchers always assumed the labyrinth was nothing but a myth. Nobody ever expected it would be a real place. Modern scholars believe the myth of the labyrinth may have come from the fact that Knossos Palace was a maze of its own. The excavations in the 1900s revealed over 1,300 rooms. The palace was so massive, it was its own labyrinth. The maze from the story most likely wasn't some mythical underground complex. It was inspired by the megalithic palace of the rulers of Crete. Unfortunately, though, the palace was obliterated by an earthquake in 1628 BC, then a volcanic eruption. Very little of it remains. Solomon's Temple According to the Bible, Solomon's Temple was the very first religious building constructed by the Israelites to honor God. It was also the place used by the Jewish people to keep the Ark of the Covenant. But what did this ancient place look like, and was it even real? This is a tough one because everything historians know about Solomon's Temple comes from the Bible. The Bible says King Solomon was the son of King David, the biblical legend who slayed Goliath with his slingshot. After David died, Solomon took over the kingdom. Within a few short years, Solomon pooled his resources to construct what's also known as the First Temple. 
The Bible goes into an extraordinary amount of detail when speaking about the temple. The Bible says it was constructed from huge stone blocks. It was lined with wooden planks and overlaid inside with pure gold. King Solomon also had an enormous pair of gold cherubs and sphinxes built within the inner sanctum to guard the legendary Ark. The Ark of the Covenant, for those who don't know, was the magical container holding the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod, and the pot of manna. Outside of the Bible, there is very little proof the temple existed. Not a single stone has ever been found despite relentless searching. Archaeologists have never discovered a sole piece of physical evidence. But to be honest, the lack of evidence isn't super surprising. The first temple, aka Solomon's Temple, was completed in 957 BC. That was over two centuries before the founding of the city of Rome. The temple stood for 400 years before it was obliterated by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Even if it had stood, the Babylon shattered it to bits. There would be no proof to find. The Ziggurat of Yore the Ziggurat of Yore stands a sad, pathetic shell of its former self near a military base in Iraq. Although it's being refurbished most recently by Saddam Hussein, it's still nothing close to what it looked like when it was completed in the 21st century BC. The Ziggurat of Yore is even older than Solomon's Temple. Some biblical scholars think it may have been the inspiration behind the biblical story of the Tower of Babel. The man behind its creation was King Or Namu of Sumer, ruler of a massive portion of Mesopotamia. The ziggurat, also called a step pyramid because of its tears, was made as a temple complex. It served as a seat for the administrative powers within the city of Yore. It was also used as a shrine to the patron deity of Yore. That patron deity was none other than the moon god Nana. And yes, the ziggurat was very similar to the tiered pyramids of Mesoamerica built by the Maya and the Aztec. The Mesoamericans also dedicated their pyramids to moon gods. This is despite the fact neither region ever had contact with one another. In 1923, archaeologist Leonard Woolley discovered a massive lump of dirt in Iraq. It looked like a simple hill of soil, but it was the ruins of the ziggurat, completely destroyed after 4,000 years of wear and tear. Saddam Hussein tried to return the ziggurat to its former glory in the 1980s but fell short of his goal. During the war in Iraq, Saddam used the ancient monument to park his fighter jets. He thought the Americans wouldn't bomb his jets if they were at the monument, but he was sorely mistaken. The Porcelain Tower of Nanjing the Porcelain Tower of Nanjing is one of very few ancient wonders that has been completely rebuilt for the modern age. The ancient Chinese structure was destroyed in the 19th century during the brutal Taiping Civil War. In 2010, a Chinese businessman donated over $150 million to the city of Nanjing to bring the legendary tower back to life. That's a lot to unpack, so let's start in the year 1402. That was when the Yongle Emperor became ruler of the Ming Dynasty. He was the one who commissioned a fantastic pagoda to be built in Nanjing. At first it was called the Great Baoan Temple. Construction started in 1428 and was finished by 1431. The first Western explorer to witness the tower was Johann Neuhoff, who listed it as one of the seven wonders of the world. It was placed alongside monuments like the statue of Zeus at Olympia. Its renown was for good reason. The temple pagoda was enormous, with its base roughly 100 feet in diameter and the tower rising far higher. When it was finished, the tower loomed 259 feet above the surrounding landscape. It had nine stories with a central staircase winding up the center of the pagoda. At the peak of the roof was a golden pineapple. When American missionaries visited in 1852, they learned of plans to extend the ancient tower to make it even taller. Then came disaster. The area around Nanjing was taken over by rebels during the Civil War. They really didn't like Buddhists, so they smashed all the Buddhist stuff they could find. That included raising the tower in 1856. The tower that stands today opened in 2015. It's not an exact replica, instead made of steel with bright lights and electricity. The money it took to build the tower is believed to be the largest single personal donation ever made in the history of China. It's that kind of philanthropy that helps keep history alive. The Pyramid Maze in the 5th century BC, Greek historian Herodotus described an amazing monument that modern scientists don't believe ever existed. According to the historian's own words, he beheld an epic labyrinth buried at the foot of the Great Pyramid of Giza. He said the labyrinth was far more impressive than the pyramids. He said it was beyond words, a truly mighty work and a baffling creation. The labyrinth had 3,000 rooms, 
and was covered in hieroglyphics and vivid paintings. Herodotus was not the only ancient historian who claimed to see the Egyptian labyrinth with his own eyes. There was also Strabo, Pliny the Elder, Moneto, Egyptiaca, and many others. They all claimed to have heard of the labyrinth from a legitimate source or said they saw it for themselves. If that's the case, why don't modern scientists believe them? It's because no physical evidence had been found of a labyrinth buried underneath Giza. Archaeologists haven't found proof, so they've largely dismissed the old accounts. But when you read through the dozens of detailed descriptions of the labyrinth made by historians over a span of centuries, the details match. They were all describing the exact same place, suggesting it was 100% real. There should be ruins of a monumental labyrinth underneath the pyramids. The maze was said to be so huge and so complex, people could get stuck inside it for days. Do you think the labyrinth truly exists? Benin City There is absolutely nothing left of Benin City today. By nothing, I mean nothing. Not a stone, not a brick, not a fragment of a door. Yet it was once the most magnificent city anywhere in Africa. Benin had earthworks more impressive than the Great Wall of China. By that I mean the walls of the city were longer than the whole Great Wall. In 1974, the Guinness Book of Records said the walls of Benin were the largest earthworks ever completed prior to the mechanical era. Scientist Fred Pierce said the walls were 1.4 times longer than the entirety of the Great Wall of China. Benin was laid out with mathematical precision. Within its impossibly huge walls were sections of the city separated into roughly 500 distinct neighborhoods or villages. The African city was also one of the first to use street lights. They had metal lamps hanging above the streets, fueled by palm oil. So, how did such an impressive city with countless monuments and wonders become totally lost? First, let's look at the inception of the city. It was built as the capital of the Benin Empire somewhere around the 11th century AD. The Benin Empire was already one of the oldest and most scientifically developed in the history of Africa. It made sense that they built such a sophisticated urban landscape. In 1485, Portuguese explorers entered the city and were astounded. They wrote that it was larger than their own capital, Lisbon, in Portugal. Ship captain Lorenco Pinto said the people of Benin lived in such security that they didn't even have doors on their houses. In the 15th century, the city began to decline. Meddling from European interlopers caused massive issues. With the introduction of colonialists and slavery, Benin was devastated. In 1897, British soldiers burnt what little remained of the city to the ground. From its ashes rose modern Benin City, though there's not a scrap of the original city left. The Library of Alexandria the Library of Alexandria is part myth and part legend. It was supposedly built at the behest of Alexander the Great, though others say it was Ptolemy I who had the idea. Although a lot of details surrounding the destroyed library are vague, there are a few things scholars agree on. The library contained an unimaginable wealth of knowledge. Take the account of Aristius. He was a courier working for the King of Egypt in the 3rd century BC. The king at the time was Ptolemy II, Philadelphus. Aristius wrote a letter to his brother describing the Library of Alexandria. He said the president of the library received massive amounts of money from the king to collect all the books in the world. While working one day at the library, Aristius overheard the president speaking to the king. The king asked, how many thousand books are there in the library? The library's president responded with, More than 200,000, O king, and I shall make endeavors to gather together the remainder so that the total number reaches 500,000. This amazingly preserved letter is a snapshot of what the library was truly like 2300 years ago. A lot of other estimates have been made, with figures for total books wavering between 200,000 and 700,000. Nobody knows how many books truly were held within the library, and nobody ever will. The Great Repository of Human Intelligence was burnt to the ground by Julius Caesar in 48 BC. Which of these amazing places would you like to restore to what they originally looked like? Let me know in the comments, and thanks a lot for watching! Be sure to hit subscribe and come back soon for more awesome videos from the channel!